Hello and welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer and joining me is someone who was once called a bonehead and they responded by calling that person a bonehead. It's Nani Boetas. <laughs> you bonehead. <laughs> you, you bonehead. I love the little, like, all the interactions between Dewey and Gail in this one. Like, one of my favorite scenes is the one where they reunite for the first time in the movie like after seeing each other Dewey's so mad at her writing the book and like making him look all bad what is that page I actually wrote it down page 41 Deputy Dewey ooze with inexperience <laughs> I'm gonna go I ooze over it. here hey how do He's you know so my mad. dim-witted inexperience isn't merely a subtle form of manipulation used to lower people's expectations thereby enhancing my ability to effectively maneuver within any given within any given situation now, if you'll excuse me, I have some oozing to do. <laughs> I, I just love it. She oh, melts. So Courtney Cox melts in their scenes together. When he does that, when she looks at him, she melts. Oh. Like, the chemistry between them is... So, I'm going to say something crazy here. I think Scream 2 features the best all-around performances by the core group. That's my... Because... Scream 4, ne uh, Campbell's kind of lost. It's mostly about, you know, like, I think Gail's, the uh, Courtney Cox is the best in 4. In 5, I think Dewey's sort of the standout. In 3, <laughs> for me, it's all about Gail again. Parker I mean, we're, I think we're noticing a pattern here. Courtney Cox is like the MVP of it. Yeah, she is. But, like, Correct. Parker Posey steals it. But in 2, I think Nev is really strong. She's, like, asked to do a lot in this movie. Gail and Dewey are wonderful together. I think even Liev Schreiber... And like uh, with Jerry O'Connell and Timothy Oliphant, like I think the cast in this movie might be, since we've been working our way backwards through it, these are the best performances because this movie's long and there's some, some very unnecessary, not necessary, but like scenes that slow it down. But the whole time watching it, you're going, these people are good in this. Like this is a, a well acted movie that was filmed and this movie got what greenlit. And released in less than a year. Yeah. <laughs> and is this good? Basically, basically the same that we're seeing now with Scream 6 that's going to be like, yeah, released in a year's time. Oh. Um, yeah, and you're so right. I mean, I think a lot of it has to do also with, I feel like they just let, maybe because they know the characters, it's the second time around, everyone knows the characters a bit better, including Wes and like, you know, uh, everyone working on the film. So, it's kind of like they started lingering the camera on our main act actors a little bit more. Like, I mean, even Jamie Kennedy, Randy, like, I mean, even him, like the moments, like it was like they were allowed to really play with the emotional side of their characters. It wasn't just story driven. Like the first one was very story, like, you know, this, this, that, beat, beat, beat. The second one definitely slowed it down a bit. And yeah, I mean, me and we, you, we've talked a lot about, like, how it, it does feel a little long, you know, by, like, the the middle of the second act going into the third act. It it, it does feel like, but but not because of those scenes where mm -hmm. everyone's acting their asses off, <laughs> more like little other plot stuff that we personally thought could have made it to the director's cuts edition <laughs> that's a really great point that you just made and i just i don't think i've ever put those two together where you know uh, uh randy gets a scene where he's like the unrequited love intro the, the nerd gets the girl and he sprays the banaka in his mouth when he's yeah, walking yeah. with the two of them and he's like ew gross like even his speech when he's walking through the the quad campus looking for the killer they linger on him and, Absolutely. But, they give him time to play it out, like really get into it. I, that scene with Randy actually is a very good um, acting scene to show like how the dynamic switches, because at first he's all very cocky about like, oh, it's first. First, he's really fascinated, actually. He's like, oh, my gosh, I get to finally talk to the killer because the killer never phones him in the first one. It's the first time. So you can see he's like, whoa, this is my moment. And then it goes to like, oh, yeah, okay, guy, okay, killer guy, you're like this and that. And then I think he says, you're never going to get the girl. And Randy is like, F you. <laughs> and he gets mad and he starts getting into it. And he starts like shit talking Billy and like the whole thing. And that, it's such a good scene. Like it's actually a very long scene if you go look at it. But that was played so well. It felt so 
natural for the characters. And I think that's what this movie did well. They were like stuff that we could get nitty gritty about and everything, but it really allowed them to. And like you said, the whole like Gail and Dewey and the chemistry between them, the way Gail looks at him, like oh, the love in her eyes for this sweet, cuddly, ridiculous man. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's the best. She melts. Best. She melts. She melts. It's not even Absolutely. acting. She just, and, and, you know, this is going to sound like a really weird example, but the Jamie Kennedy death, Ra- Randy's death, we, we talked about feeling like a gut shot, but it feels more like a scene from the movie Soldier where Kurt Russell uses a helicopter blade to cut open Jason Scott Lee's stomach, and then he starts punching him in the stomach where he just <laughs> sliced his stomach. Like, this isn't a regular yeah. gut punch. This is... because. Yeah. I watched this in the theater because my brother told me like, he saw I didn't get to see Scream in the theater. My brother did. And I loved it. So I went and watched Scream 2 in the theater. And that Randy death, that's a like a that's a like brave move that like this movie has guts, literal and metaphorical. And it, I loved it. I mean, it hurts, but it's so devious and it's so Wes and it's so beautiful that yeah like even just watching it i get a smile on my face but you know what's crazy i, I i've talked to, i've written about this movie before for movies films and flicks and i've said that's the best pure like horror sequel slasher sequel ever made and there's a bunch of caveats here like aliens and alien like aliens yes is, is a classic but aliens has a different cast different director 12 years apart eight years apart you have you have other sequels that are, are really good but I, this one happened a year later with the core cast. This isn't like Friday the 13th 1 and 2. Or this isn't like Nightmare on Elm Street 1 and 2. Or Final Destination 1 and 2. This is like the same crew of characters moving into the next experience. Yeah. And it's like the, the fact that they had a year to make it. But I did – this is the first time, though, that I've ever been watching it in the CC scene. So, like, you know, in the 90s, I was like, Sarah Michelle Gellar is amazing. You know, like, I never thought about it. But – now that I watch it, I'm like, this scene's not – like, why is this here? Like, I, I, does that make sense? Like, I don't want to hate yeah, on the that, movie, but – No, but I mean, you're right because that scene – I also have a lot of problems with that scene because the only reason that scene is in there is because the killers are killing people with the same names, <laughs> like the people that died in the first one. That's, like, literally it. Like, there's a lot of contriveness with, like, the actual plot of this one. I mean, like, we've spoken about some of it. We'll get into some of it now. Yeah, I also thought, I mean, Sarah Michelle Gellar, like, her character, Cece, she she looks like this blonde, ditzy girl, but she's not. I mean, she's being, like, the sober, designated driver, chicky, like, wedding at the house, Kappa, or whatever. You guys all have weird colleges. <laughs> like, you know, she's, like, responsible, and she's not, like, ooh, being flattered over the phone or anything. She she seems like she's got it so together, and then it's these weird things, like, you know, that starts playing out when the doorbell rings and she goes out and, oh, 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 there's no signal right outside the door. She needs to go back in. And then it's the up the stairs thing and all the tropes. I don't mind the tropes. I mean, I love it. It's Scream. It's ways like we're like playing up horror tropes and whatever. But I, her, her character just, it didn't come together for me, you know? Mm. Like, I was like... And it's the same problem I have with Billy's mom. The character doesn't make sense to me. Why, if her only thing is to have revenge over, like, Billy's death, wouldn't she just hire someone to kill Sydney if she, got, you know, wants her hands clean? Why this whole elaborate plan? I just didn't, I don't buy it. I get Mickey. <laughs> Mickey's a freak show. <laughs> you found on the dark but... web in 97. <laughs> I mean, I just don't, like... If if Mickey was the mastermind and he somehow manipulated Billy's mom to get into his plan of, like, making this thing because he wants to be, like, Hollywood movie famous or whatever, sure, but he's not the mastermind. I mean, so uh, it's just, like, little things with some of the characters. Cool characters, great. Extras, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I think Laurie Metcalf is so good in this. That you... I love those eyes like you know when a performance is good when three years later you go wait a second that doesn't make sense is because you're so caught up in the performance 
And yeah, so watching yeah. her in this, I love her. Like she's so. Like, oh the yeah, no, listen, like the, she does it so well. Oh. And, you know, she. I like that she just shoots Mickey. Uh, she gets rid of him. And, and you know, I would have. I'm not saying I ever like when people are murdered, but the whole following the pattern, I I would have liked it better when. Remember when Cece looks at him and goes, "You have a hard on for Cameron," and or Ridley Scott, one of the two. And he gives her this look. It would make more sense if he was pissed at her and he went and did that. Does that make like. Exactly. Exactly. Like I I kind of, he felt like he needed just a little more motivation than, oh, they have the same name. Mm -hmm. Like, and not really even because of what, Cece's name was actually something else. Mm -hmm. Casey something. And it was Casey Baker. Like, it's not even like literally the same name. I'm like, really? So there was no Casey at that college. No Casey whatsoever. <laughs> like, you know, even despite like, thinking about Laurie Metcalf's character, thinking about the CC kill, I think this movie has some of the strongest moments, though, in the franchise. Like, I, I like between the the Randy moment, I love Jada Pinkett, uh, Pinkett the opening, uh, yeah. in the beginning. You know, she wanted to have this massive scream. I love how she's talking about like Sandra Bullock movies and just the chaos of the theater. Uh, I, I just think this movie has some of the strongest moments, but then it has some moments where you're like, what? Like what? I, I, uh, I hate being thing almost. Like <laughs> I will never say though, that this is what I would do in a horror situation because you know, yeah, you never know. Like, yeah. We've spoken about this a lot. You, it, you, you don't know. <laughs> like I stub my toe and I'm like, ah, you know, like, I don't, like, I don't know what to do. Or something drops and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, so you, you're yeah. kind of like, this is how you, do, like, you know, if something even, you know, some people are so organized that, you know, a pencil's out of place, they get stressed out. So it's like, exactly. I don't want to say how I would act to this, but it, it's, it, but I'll, I will say it's a testament to this movie where there's that car crash scene and then they have to crawl over the killer because I never thought about that in 97. I was just tense. I was just squeezing my seat. Yeah. And I, I guess most importantly, I'm like, well, this is new. I have never seen this before. Yeah. Uh, but then later on when he gets behind her and, and kills her and uh, you're just kind of. They're standing right there. The car is right behind them. How did they not see him get out of the car? I mean, he, he obviously had to get out of the car the same way, yeah. like sliding through. How do you not? Like Haley is standing literally facing like the car is behind Sydney. She's looking at Sydney. So she would see the car. I just, I'm like every time. And then also Ghostface. I mean, he like stabs the one uh, security guard detective dude. That's like, like uh, looking after Sydney. He stabs the one, but the other one, he starts beating him up. And then he throws him on top of the car hood. And then he goes for a joyride, crashes the car like a numb nuts. And whilst this detective guy is literally holding a gun the whole time, I mean, why not just stab him too? Yeah, it's and it's it's, uh, it's like, <laughs> but I mean, it's little things that takes you out. But like you say, then it's that whole sequence where they need to slide over him. That was great. So it feels like this movie. Like I spoke to Corey last night after watching it again, and I just think there were there were tones that like it constantly shifted, and it wasn't always necessarily like taking us along like it's where it was broken for us i don't think everyone who watched the movie felt the same way but yeah i think people you know agree with us on it like that's kind of like what you feel it's the same like with the end you've got mickey i love timothy oliphant in the end he's so camp he's hysterical i love it but that's the thing. He's like the funny guy. And I kind of think that Billy's mom took him out too fast because then suddenly it all got serious again. And it's again that little, like I say, tone shifts where it's like, wait, what? what? You're, 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 they didn't lose me, but it felt like I need to, I need to, I needed to work to just keep on the like vibe, you know? But yeah, also like, I mean, we're more critical when we watch movies in general. The first time I watched it, like, obviously it wasn't as good as the, the first one, but I didn't think it would be. Yeah, why would it was it a be, lot right? that I loved. No, exactly. But yeah, I remember the first time too, I felt like it was a tad too long. I just felt like there were some unnecessary sequences and stuff. But yeah, no, I mean, it's still, I still love it. Listen, I still, it's, it's my least favorite of the Scream films, but I still love it. It's my second favorite. A lot favorite. to love. 
Because I guess because of the individual scenes that are so strong. Like, I, it has the strongest scenes, I think, aside from screen. The strong, strongest screen scenes. No, never mind. I was trying to tongue twist myself there. <laughs> but, I mean, just... I mean, even I, we, let's talk about. Oh, real quick, I just want to say uh, I watched Scary Movie the other day. I uh, watched Scary Movie one and two, and Scary Movie in that one, Cindy Anna Ferris looks away, and during that time, the killer Ghostface does this little high step behind a tree, and then she yeah. looks back, and the killer is not there, and that's what Ghostface does. That's what every single killer in the history of cinema has done in that scene in Scary Movie. That would like wreck all of my data articles right there <laughs> if they showed that scene so i just love in scary movie yeah. the thing running behind the tree because it just made me laugh so much but you know, like i love the opening scene though with with omar epps and and jada pinkett like just her yelling at the screen uh screen and just like you know what's interesting everyone's in the theaters yelling then she yells and she's shushed and just like but the the but but if you think about it though the killer gets the guy next to him in the stall stabs perfectly into his ear incredible and then takes Magic. his clothes, goes on, gets her. But it makes the experience kind of scary because in a raucous theater like that in a college town, that probably could happen. That could happen. Dude, honestly, every time I watch Screen 2 and that opening scene, I'm like, if, 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 if I was there and I walked into that theater, I would have like, it would have taken me a second to be like, nope, and walk <laughs> out. It's so rowdy and chaotic. And like, I see, I watch that oh i see that and i get so anxious like i'm like why 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 would you want to watch a movie like this this is too much you can't even hear people are just screaming and yelling like they're at a frat party <laughs> it's crazy and i mean i must say so this is the first stab movie but they did some lank marketing because it's like a, a preview screening like a special screening but like the people are there in droves and they are amped and it's this whole thing can you imagine that happening in real life? When people go crazy for a movie based on a real true crime, like <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, it's whack. It's more of an audience. It's more of an audience for a sequel, I would say. It feels like that. Like or when I watched it again, I was like, wow, the marketing must have been incredible because look at these people going for a movie that they like. They don't. It's the first stab movie in the universe of screen. But I just also want to say, like, I'm our Epps. Like, every time I watch it, I love him more and more, like, because he's so funny and he's just, like, there to have fun and he mm -hmm. thinks it's all a joke. And I don't know. I just love his... He's, he's kind of whimsical about the whole thing. Yeah, and he's like... Uh, I mean, uh, it's good. She goes, um, uh, give me your money. He's like, you got money. She's like, no, I want your money. <laughs> and that that just makes me happy. And and but like watching him get stabbed, watching them bring in Jada. You know, by this time she was she was in Demon Knight. She was in Set It Off. I, I I think that so she was like the big name getting killed off in the beginning of this movie. You know, I kind of yeah. set it off. Set it off. Yeah, ninety six. So she was like the big name for this. And you know, I watched Collateral the other day, and it, all these movies remind me of how good she was back in the day. Like like I, I haven't kept up with Red Table Talk or anything, but. Like Jada in the nineties, two thousands, she was like just so likable on screen. She had such a cool presence. Yeah. So yeah, just, yeah. You know, just watching this and then watching the stab and you know she had this crazy long scream because that's what she she told Wes. She's like, just give me the scream. Like let me have the biggest <laughs> screen ever. And he abided. <laughs> and I think it's kind of a fun way to start the movie because it it's talking about like the theatrical experience and also commenting on the genre, but it's also kind of scary. So it's, I don't know, I dig it. It was, it was a good opening yeah. scene for it's me. Chaos, chaos and camp. And I think, yeah, like a lot of the second one is a bit chaos and camp because like the chaos kind of comes in with the whole frat house vibe that they try to do, but it never goes anywhere. See, this is like another thing for me is Rebecca Gayard and Portia de Rossi is way underused. I kind of don't actually understand why they're there. They're there to kind of represent the, oh, Sydney, like, you must be like, you know, like with us or whatever. But I mean, yeah, last night I was like, why isn't there more of them in here? Mm -hmm. like, I don't, you, you get what I'm saying? Well, like, one of them could have been hunted and killed and given more you know? style. And I do love it. She walks up to Sydney and she goes, hello, Sydney. Like, the like I, that's not Australian, <laughs> yeah. but she says Sydney. Hello, Sydney. Like, she says 
Oh, Sydney. Like, uh, uh, I'm trying to do like a California, but I sounded Australian. You do it 10 more times. You need to do okay, it 10 okay. more times. Hello, Sydney. No, that's Australian. <laughs> okay, okay. Whoa, whoa. Think Spicoli. Think Spicoli. Think Spicoli. Ah, oh, I just eat them not. Hello, Sydney. I can't, oh, gosh. I can't do it. <laughs> but the way she says it, I had to write it down because it's funny. And Portia de Rossi's really funny if you've seen her I mean, in she's Arrested Development. Fed. Yeah, she's fantastic. She's a great, like, she brings the comedy. And I think that's the thing. I wanted more of them or, like, at least, like you say, why why, why didn't it? We were so sure one of them would get off mm -hmm. and not even, like, the last time we see them, it's when boyfriend gets like captured by his kappa guys or whatever, and they're off and the two are just like running. Ooh, this is so romantic. It's so Greek or whatever they say. Like, and there they go. And yeah. that's like the last time we see them. I'm like, okay, bye. <laughs> Characters, you... I don't really know why you're here. <laughs> I think they just threw them in because they were getting popular at the time. Like this is before Urban Legend when Gay Hart was in it. This was before, so like you know, I think they also brought in Sarah Michelle Gellar too, just for the role, because I think she wanted in. She's like, yeah. oh, I want to do it, so like, all right, getting the names. And also too, yeah. I mean, they had to make, they had to, they had to get this plan shot, edited, marketed in the theaters in one year. So there was gonna, there was no time to tighten the script. I don't think. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, Event Horizon had a had a really tiny filming period, and they over edited it because they had no time. So I thought, well, I wonder if they just left a lot of these subplots in there. But one thing I do love about the Scream world is, if you think about Scream 5, you have the twins, right? You have the very athletic twin. He's not the killer. In Scream 4, Kirby's like the super cool girl who's actually cool. She's not the killer. In, in Scream 2, you have uh, Derek. Uh, yeah, Derek. Jerry O'Connor's Derek. Like, he's just a, a guy. Like, he's a frat guy, but he's not the killer. I like that the killers yeah. are Mickey are like kind of kind of like uh Culkin and Richie. It's interesting that they play on this very sort of like it's always the like not n nerdy, but like entitled, angry, non like job. Unimpressive. Yeah. Like almost unimpressive. Randy actually goes off like before he dies, he says like Billy Loomis, are you kidding me? He's so pathetic and what like he goes off about how just basically unimpressive Billy is. And now you want to like copycat Billy because at that point they think it's a copycat killer. Like, it's like, why? You know, <laughs> he's so like nothing. And I love that. I love that they don't make the killers these Michael Myers impressive units, specimens, you know, like mm -hmm. it is actually cool. It's a cool observation. Yeah, like but yeah, I mean, I actually wrote an article about <laughs> how embarrassing for crack. What, what was it like beginning of the year of how embarrassing it must be to get killed by Ghostface because of all the slashers he's like the clumsiest character in Scream 2 the first time he stalks Sydney through one of the houses like he literally runs into a table he just runs straight <laughs> into it. like the table is right in the middle of the room and he just runs into it oh my like, <laughs> you do this but I love that like it's not this ooh Super, like, again, your Michael Myers types, you know, like, indestructible killer. No, it's these people that run into tables and think they're all that, but they're really not. <laughs> and doesn't, doesn't he fall over a chair in this one? I think it's Mickey who goes after Cece. Doesn't Mickey wipe out on a chair and, like, flip it over? It's Yeah. You can't probably. see in that mask. Gosh. You can trip in that mask, and you're running around <laughs> kamikaze. So you're going to womp into something. With that robe, with that robe thing hanging, yeah. big boots. I'm like, I mean, you'd think more like Adidas, you know, sneakers <laughs> and, like, track pants. Like, <laughs> like a onesie, like, a, like, a, like Michael Myers wears. <laughs> Uh, it's just something easy that you know, like so no one can see tattoos and stuff. Spandex. But... I want I want the next big slasher to be in spandex. Oh yeah. Like leggings. Yoga pants. Athletic leggings. Yoga pants. Maybe like leg warmers. Like That's Rose Byrne from that days. workout show on uh yes. Apple. Physical. Yeah. So ro the Rose Byrne <laughs> killer. That'd be amazing. Yeah, but it would be embarrassing being killed by Ghostface. Like, that's... One of the clumsiest. So, and, like, one of the, the interesting things about this movie is how much it talks about sequels. 
So, like, what are the best horror sequels and why? Like, why? So this movie has a higher tomato meter rating, and it made $1 million less in, in the theater. So, like, this movie made $172 million and 97 worldwide. This is a blockbuster hit. Uh, yeah. And, like, why is this a successful sequel where maybe people don't think three and four are Okay, this movie with the inflation, if you adjust the box office in the United States, $201 million. That If it was released this year, that's how much due to inflation it would make based on ticket sales. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, let's see, what? 1997. Like, I, I yeah. guess, you know, so many sequels, when you think about Freddy, he goes after different people. Uh, Jason goes after different people. Final Destination different people it's uh, you, you know even when people talk about manhunter to silence of the lambs that's not really a sequel it's more silence of the lambs to hannibal which is still pretty here's, good yeah but here's my theory right so i just googled and so scream 2 came out in 1997 the sixth sense came out in 1999 i googled that because like it's about the twists in the end like, you know, the whole whodunit, you've got, like, you know, stuff with Freddie and, um, and and Jason and Michael. The killer is Freddie and Jason and Michael. It's no one else. Like, I mean, the first time with Fred, uh, uh, with Jason, it was the mom. But then it's Jason. It's not like this mystery, like, whodunit. Scream is a whodunit. So, like, I think everyone wants hmm. to watch it to see who the killer is in the end. And I think that's why it did so well as a sequel. Everyone went because the first one was – fun and excellent and um obviously the marketing was good on screen oh yeah and but yeah to go and see okay who's the killer gonna be this time and i think that's why it works in general as a franchise because again like it's not that you don't know who the killer is it, so that's part of the fun everybody loves a good who done it mm -hmm. um and they tend to do it like pretty well even if it's not like people's favorite killer in the end or whatever like i didn't enjoy or, or like i mean not it i didn't it's not that i didn't enjoy but like i said i have a, i have some problems with billy's mom some people had problems with rowan from the third one still though like it's you know it was still worth watching the movie and it keeps on being worth it that's why we all rewatch it all the time because there's so many good moments the moments kind of makes it feel like Final Destination. I think that's where Final Destination yeah. kind of picks up on. If you just have good scenes and you just keep on like doing these sequences because people like that, and that's what makes them watch stuff, even though they might not have liked the ending or or, or the the killer who was revealed, they like the good those moments. So cool, Final Destination. Let's just make a movie only with the moments, basically. Yeah, that's it. Cut everything <laughs> else out. Only moments. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, but yeah, I think that's why, like, Scream is a sequel. Everybody went to watch it because, yeah, who, who did it? Who gone done it? <laughs> and then, yeah, two years later, The Sixth Sense came, and it was the twists. And I think we ushered into the whole, yeah, you got to give us a gnarly ending, something that we didn't expect. Ah, yeah. yeah. And, and you know what's yeah. interesting about the Scream movies is... Like, I was thinking about Final Destination 3 and that wildly gratuitous tanning bed scene that just, like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a lot. It's one of the meanest things lot. I've ever seen in my life. But if yeah. I, uh, Scream, we'll get to that. But Scream 2, it doesn't have the most gratuitous scenes. It's not the bloodiest. There's not the most guts. There's there's really not much sex or gratuitous shots of women. Are there? I mean, no. And, and like, 3, is there 4? Is there like four has some five, not so much. So it's like, nope. it's a r interesting franchise in that it's aside from maybe the, the, the gutting of Drew Barrymore in the first one, this movie largely stays away from like excessive gratuity, but it's also found a ton of success. So it's a weird outlier. Is it like, does that make sense? Like it's yeah, it like gives a little bit of, but I think it's definitely trying because it's 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 still like it's meta. I think it tries to like be smart enough to not need all the gore or all the boob shots or all the you know like all the gratuity that like we're used to seeing in movies like this. It tries to be clever, and I think for the most part, it is. It It's clever and good acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Nev Campbell. Kristen Stewart is Nev Campbell. 
I think I, I, she's a clone, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. The more I watch young Nev Campbell, the more I see Kristen Stewart. And that's not a knock on Kristen Stewart. I mean, how many actors pattern themselves after Dustin Hoffman, De Niro, and Pacino? So, I mean, it's exactly. not – like so many actors do it. I'm not, I'm not like, saying uh, – I think Kristen's awesome. So, I don't know. I just had to get that out there. But I don't know. I, I keep – you know what's fun about work? This is really neat working our way backwards through this because yeah. I've never done this before. Yeah. And I really enjoy it because it feels like you're working back towards the original. And I, I, I don't know. I've really dug this series so far. And then, like, like uh, uh, what do we have? Oh, wait. How many stabs are there? So we've got 22 stabs. That's light. Seven. That's light. Seven out of eight kills, which is the highest oh. yet. Yeah. And then, so 22 stabs, 28 gunshots, of which only happens literally in the final scene. All the gunshots. All the gunshots is, like, right at the end. Kills, what? Kills three. Yeah, kills three. Um, so, yeah, no, it's actually pretty live. It's it's very mellow. I mean, I think the gory scene was probably the, sh- the quick little shot that they showed of Randy all sliced and diced. Yeah, and the blood pouring on the ground. Yeah, exactly. I think that was, like, the goriest. Yeah, that was totally the goriest. But, like, also, too, I love when Dewey gets stabbed 47 times, and they're like, oh, just hit some scar tissue. He's fine. <laughs> that scene, though, hurts when they're in those... those dew drop. Oh, dew drop. Uh, dew drop. When they're in their uh, soundproof area, and you just see Dewey getting stabbed. Like, they go back to that at Scream 3, but that hurts watching him get hit again. Like, I like yeah. him a lot. And then when Cotton Weary, I know we're jumping all over the place, but when Cotton Weary goes to Gale after she's been shot, like, what are you, a cat? Uh, it just makes me so happy because like, she just gets <laughs> gut shot. He's like, oh, you're like a cat. Uh, but what were your vibes from Cotton Weary in this movie? Yeah, right. I mean, I actually, his character was also a bit more developed, which was cool. Because in the first one, he was like just a guy accused. We didn't really know who this guy was. But yeah, I mean, the second one, at first, you feel like, you kind of get the guy because he just wants to be like vindicated. But then he's so terrible with Sydney. And there at the end, oh gosh, I mean, Sydney literally had to like convince him not to. I mean, would he have sh- shot Sydney? I mean, what? What? Like, Cotton is such a freaking weirdo. So it was such a good call to just kill him, like the first scene of the third one. Yeah. The, right at the beginning of the next movie. Good call. Because I think that was clever to kind of set it up like that. Whether that was intentional or not, it worked out brilliantly. So, yeah, that was a good call to do that because what a weirdo. What a weirdo. He was Gosh. thinking about it. He was. He was so oh, man. Oh, oh. And then just. That, I love that scene in the computer when someone messages Sydney and then she goes to reply and she just hits like we uses two fingers and goes doot 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 like responds <laughs> back to him and then the guy the random guy oh it's the same network you uh it's, it's, it's fine you know everyone can use it yeah everyone's locked in or whatever <laughs> I love the law the hacking in '97 and then watching Sydney yeah. but that's how I typed in the '90s like I didn't like I didn't use many computers True. so I was like boop 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 True. and she was older uh, she's older than me. Uh, not by much, but she came to computers probably later in age as well. So I just kind of, yeah. I, I yeah. love that aspect of it. And But I mean, I also love like, you know, at the end it takes place on a stage. So it's so theatrical. And it's just, I love when the fake bricks land on, what, oh, I was yeah. going to call her Mrs. Voorhees. Miss Voorhees, when they land on uh, um, Lori Metcalf and they sound like real rocks. I'm like, what is happening here? These styrofoam yeah, rocks exactly. crush her. Yeah, I mean, like, anyone who works in the theater knows that that's not going to crush her. I mean, <laughs> if it could, that would be the most dangerous college theater in the world. Like, shut it down. Shut that production down. Someone's going to get killed in the theater. Who's using real oh, bricks? <laughs> <laughs> who does that? <laughs> but, yeah, I just... <laughs> The overall, I'm still keeping this movie as my number two because of the Randy scene. Because I think I think it has some of the strongest scene. If you put together like if I maybe we could do that. I don't know if you're like I don't know if you want to do this, but maybe at the end of our scream episode, we could do our five favorite scream scenes as well. Oh, well, we could because we've been like for every episode we've done like our favorite scenes. So I mean, I can just literally go back and look at what I have and do my top. My top favorite. See, that's that's why this one is my least favorite because this one 
Like for all the others, I have like five, six favorite scenes. This one is like two, huh. three. Maybe it was just the time frame when I watched it. I remember just watching I do this. think so. I because think... I also didn't watch it when it came out. I didn't watch it in the theater. I watched it when it came out on DVD later. Um, so maybe it was a time thing. I kind of like the Charlie O'Connell. Jer- no, Charlie O'Connell. Jerry O'Connell. Jerry O'Connell character. I liked him in this movie. Like, what, what we you... haven't talked about Joel. Yeah. Oh, Joel. Oh. Yeah, Joe! I, uh, but did were you were you not really a fan of uh, Jerry O'Connor or Derek? Were you not a Derek guy when he gets up and sings no. and uh, you weren't a fan I, of that? Oh, I hate that. I I I yeah. I, I so hoped we weren't gonna talk about this. Okay. Well, we don't have I to. I can't watch that scene. It's so cringing. Oh, like I I don't know. Every time I die a little. <laughs> I don't know why. And it's funny because I always thought it was just me. Corey is exactly the same. Like, we, I don't know why it's so funny. Like, that is just like the words. We're like, shut up, Jerry. <laughs> you know what I think it is? In 97, uh, every every one of these college movies or high school movies, the kids were tropes. So then watching this big frat dude get up and sing terribly. And, you know, this kid's probably still like 20 years old. Like, watching him get up and sing badly and, like, earnestly to her, even though it's a terrible time, it's uh, it felt kind of nice to me because you're not used to, the, like, the like that earnestness on screen, at least in the 90s for me. Like, it wasn't – you had, you had like, the jocks. You know, like, Encino Man, jockey boyfriend. Can't hardly wait, jockey boyfriend. Uh, I know what you did last summer, jockey boyfriend. So it was kind of fun to see, like, a big – frat dude getting up and singing badly i don't know i kind of enjoyed that i thought it was something different also i like less than jake and they did a really good cover for it on the screen too soundtrack also oh the one oh, good yeah thing, the, i love the cover the one good thing about cc's not a good thing about her death but when after she dies they cut into the swing by everclear that's that's a good song that leads like from her death into an everclear song so i kind of liked that transition yeah. into there and and also this this soundtrack had Nick Cave, it had Less Than Jake, Everclear, Tonic, Foo Fighters, Collective Soul, Dave Matthews, Sugar Ray, D'Angelo, Cottonmouth Kings, Master P, but it had like, it had a pretty cool soundtrack that I bought. I remember buying this soundtrack because I was, I'm I'm still a big Less Than Jake fan, but listening to that uh, and just hearing those songs come on. And also, I am so envious of Dewey, and I don't know if you can make this happen, Zanani, but whenever I want to walk, whenever I walk into a room... I want to have the Broken Arrow theme play. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. Dewey's theme like, is amazing. Yeah, no, like, I mean, like, yeah, you're going through the soundtrack, and I mean, it, it would be really actually difficult for me to tell you which of the Scream soundtracks are my favorite, because just like the Scream soundtracks in general, I mean, like, I've got all of them on uh, uh, Spotify because they're just great, like, <laughs> yeah. And so easy to just put on and kind of feel nostalgic, but also like, yeah, it's Scream soundtrack. It's it's so good. Even it's the just fourth one. Like clever music and yeah, and I love how because that's it's nostalgic because it takes that time because it's also times like specific. All the movies, it's very like the songs of the times. Um, yeah, it's just good. I love it. I love this. I love that we, uh, you mentioned it because love the soundtracks. Uh, but that good. song that I, I'm like. I, lo- I love all right, first and foremost I love punk covers so newfound glory they have yeah. great punk covers I have all the, I bought all the CDs like I have Spotify playlists of just punk covers like I can listen to punk covers all day but I oh, love it's... that uh, less than Jake cover that made me so happy oh same like I actually last night when I watched it I forgot about the covers so when like the credits started and it came up it was like yeah, yeah put it louder yeah it's a great cover but I... like yeah also just yeah good song like to work into the movie uh yeah i mean i i don't like that scene but i'll give props to the music choices that were made <laughs> and his necklace comes back into play as well in, in the third film yeah 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 so that's a interesting kind of aspect I to actually, it but... i actually forgot about that mm, you're right yeah it's... Derek. i don't know Derek was also so nothing for me yeah <laughs> He's very van- like he's simply meant he's to go vanilla. run inside the room. Yeah, he's just gonna run inside the room. You know, to 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 man, Mickey really manipulates people because he sits down to her. 
she says something. He's like, you're not alone. He's like, then why did he run in there? Like, he he's dropping. When you watch it again, he's dropping little things in there. Uh, where's he at? Oh, he's editing. Um, but yeah. So I, subtle. Little things. It's like, ah. <laughs> dark web in 97. Or no, they probably found him in 96. Because a couple of yeah, years ago. Yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. How many years is that? Well, she has to write the book. And then the book has to get released. And then the movie has to be filmed based on the book. I think I say it somewhere, but I can't remember. Scream timeline? I, can, I should look that up. All right. And then also, I had a really good time coming up with my five characters. Because every episode, we include our five favorite characters who aren't the main three. And so we always have to keep it at five. And so we if we add one, we have to drop one. But this was fun. I like – uh oh, wait. Let's see. They take place between 95 and 2022. These articles. They, yeah, they, I'm trying to wiki, but like it's not really giving it. So they said 96. They don't even write. Oh gosh. Like the, two years later. That's what it said. Scream is two okay. years later. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking two. Two would make sense because it can't be that much. Like couldn't be that much time between the two. So yeah, two years sounds good. We're going with two. Now Zanani, we're both writers and we understand getting clicks, but. Those articles are like, this is how to watch the Scream franchise in order. And you're just. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who wrote this? No, actually, no, we're not naming and shaming. Um, uh, they, they can do it themselves. But I mean, people <laughs> click on it, right? People do. So it's the game. You get clicks. Yeah, so you get clicks. don't hate the player. Hate the game. Uh, hate the people that click oh on clickbait gosh. articles. This star of Dark Knight is now going to be in the next movie by Ryan Johnson. It's like, what? <laughs> um, I've, I've decided if something doesn't tell me what it is in the title, I don't click on it. So, oh, 100%. Same. I refuse. I, it makes me mad. So I'm like, why will I click on this? I mean, everyone else puts it in the title. What's wrong with you? Go away. <laughs> that and if I freaking click on an article and the first thing is some pop-up, it's the closest or the fastest, like, I just close it down. It's the fastest way for me to do that. Get out Don't of here. do that. <laughs> Please Get stop. out of here. Huh? Stop wasting my time. <laughs> All right, so you want to do our five keepers? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, want to alternate? You wanna I'll do one, you you do one, or you want to do me? I'll do my five, you do your five. Do your five. Okay. And then I'll... Okay. Kirby. Scream four. Oh, Has to stay. Mm. Kirby is the best. Yes. Jennifer Jolie. Scream three. Yes. She is... <laughs> wonderful yes i can I, that's the best word to say uh the next one randy from scream 2 i i know i could have added <laughs> him in scream 1 but i love his scene in this movie they gave him the scene i also love his scene with arquette where they're in there drinking like shakes and talking about who could be the killer well if i'm a suspect yeah. you're a suspect all right let's move yes. on like yeah what a, on. oh i love that scene uh <laughs> then i'm gonna do mindy from scream 5 because I just I I just think she's a lot of fun. She'll be back for more. But this is this is why this is why I held off talking about this character. So my fifth character is Joel Jones Joel! from Scream Two. Because this cameraman, he knows what's up. Uh, this is the best part. Look, granted, I should have read your book before I took this job, but I'm reading it now, and whoa, I just read what happened to your last cameraman. The guy got gutted. Now I'm gonna do what any rational human being would do. And just get the F out of here. Gail, first of all, he wasn't gutted. I made that part out. His throat was slashed. Joel, Gail, gutted, slashed, the guy ain't in the union no more. <laughs> like, exactly. The guy ain't in the union no more. Oh, oh I, love I love that. I love that line. Uh, did you get that on film? <laughs> yes, I got that on film. film? <laughs> <laughs> I, I filmed the bingo competition, almost won a local Emmy. Uh, it's... Uh... It just makes me so happy. It's um, Joel's great. Like, yeah, it would have been great. To actually, how cool would it have been if like Gail had this cameraman that actually stuck with her, and we got to see him in the third one, maybe even the fourth one. And this was like the executive Joel, executive producer. Oh I man, mean, just calling her from the studio. Like, I'm not coming down there, but I'm sending you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I just love it how he he runs away. Like he's, he's I'm out of here. I'm gone. Yeah. I'm, He's the clever one. Yeah. He's like, no, like rationally, this is dumb and I'm going to go. I want to stay in the union. <laughs> the guy's not in the union no more. It's, <laughs> it's, 
that's a, it, I love it. I, I love like you know what's interesting about this character too. They don't over like this character's not overblown either. Yes, he's talking about a lot yeah. of tropes in there, but they write him well, and he's played yeah. really well. And so that's why I had to add him. So my five, and I'm very happy with my five. They are Kirby, Jennifer Jolie, Randy, Mindy, Joel Jones are my fa- five love, favorites so far. So oh um, gosh, we have a lot of similars. I wanted to pick Joel too, but then I thought, no, we can't literally have the same teams. Um, but we do have a lot. I mean, I've also got Kirby up top because, I mean, come on, of course, of course, it's Kirby. And I'm going to keep Chad because I've been a Chad fan <laughs> since <laughs> we started this series. Um, you've got Mindy and I've got Chad, so we can both take a twin with us. Jennifer, Jennifer Jolie. I mean, I can't not pick her. Yeah, she's the best. I'm also, I'm, I'm also picking Randy. Because I also like him more in this one because I feel like, like, you know, the first one is high school Randy. Now it's college Randy and he actually has matured. Like, yeah. ever so slightly, but he has. Um, he was, it was definitely, he was good in this one. And also, rest in peace, Randy. So picking Randy. And then for my final, I am keeping my girl Sam from the newest, latest Five Cream. <laughs> five Sam, Sam, Sam's my girl. Stab. Uh, she's so stab that, heavy. That's why you love her. Yeah, exactly. Like she's she's stab heavy. Um, she's kind of like because she's a protagonist, but also is she? Like mm-hmm. I love that. I love she, that she's like Billy's daughter. It's such a <laughs> wacky twist. Um. So I, yeah, I need a I need a badass in there. So yeah, Sam's my badass. You know, Sam in five reminds me of a lot of Sydney in four. Like, they're just grown women who run into things, and, like, they're not, like, you just don't mess with them. Does that make sense? Like Yeah, they're, they're kind of, like, so over it. Like, why are you wasting my, I am over this. Yeah. yeah like exactly. They're, they're the grown people coming in there and taking care of business, and I love it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I could, see, I would add all the, I could have all those in my list. So I think we have some strong, we have some strong lists going on here. So, yeah, yeah. this is, we have the twins, you got Sam. But yeah, Randy too. You know what's interesting about Randy before we get out of here? I know it's late for you, but what I like about Randy is he he's like he has a massive crush on Sid, but he's not entitled about it, if that makes sense. Like he he can put himself aside to help her. And like she's with O'Connell. Exactly. He's not sitting there pining away being that weird entitled guy. He's like, this sucks, but she's still my friend and I got her back. Exactly. Yeah. No, Randy, yeah. Poor Randy, honestly. I think that's why it was such a gutted, gut, gutting scene because you felt like, oh gosh, did, did this character deserve more? I mean, did he just now get off because he knows it all? And I mean, he was right. He like talked about Mickey and Mrs. Furious yep. in his little speech about who done it. Like he totally called it, and then he gets gutted for it. It's like, oh man, it's yeah, it's it's actually terrible. Well, the Cottonmouth King play. And those guys yeah. dance by. Yeah, I love that little like, <laughs> wow, trying to lighten the mood here with the ha ha. <laughs> like, a year, a year. This movie was made was like maybe they had a script already written, cast, scouted, filmed, kept in secrecy, a bunch of different scripts, filmed different endings. Yeah. Edited, marketed, released, and it lived up to. You know what's crazy? I don't think it lived up to Scream's expectations, but sometimes sequels fail spectacularly to live up to expectations. This one did enough and was good enough to make sure the next one they made was still going to be viewed by many people. 100%. No, they really solidified the the world. I think it was very clever to keep, you know, the core -hmm. core characters, because that's also the thing. We didn't know who was going to be back and who not. I mean, they wanted to kill off Dewey in the first one. They were very close to killing off Deputy Dewey in the first one. So we wouldn't have Dewey. I mean, they it wasn't this plan of where they were, where we were going to go. Like, David Arquette just worked so well, and everybody loved what he did with the character, that they rewrote the first script to keep him. Oh. And, I mean, we got him until five, and he was supposed to die in the first one. So I like that. You know, like, we didn't know who was going to be the core group, and they chose well. I think it just works with 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 who they took i would have liked to see randy and at least another one but then again we had the beauty that's like one of my favorite and it's also like yeah 
See, I love that scene in Scream 3 <laughs> where they watch the videotape of Randy. That's so cool. Like, how do you bring this guy into the third one? Of course he made a tape. Yeah. Of course he did. <laughs> and his so roommate good. annoys him. Yeah. <laughs> and he knows Dewey's going to say something. Yes, Karen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the last thing, last thing I love about this movie, Gail, there's a scene where Gail, she's just, she, I like when she's like, listen, I don't normally feel bad. I don't normally admit when I'm wrong, but I was wrong and I feel terrible right now. So let's go take care of this. And I like that Dewey, you know, in some movies it's like, Hey, the world's ending, but we can't get over ourselves long enough to go help save the world because you made me angry two years ago. Like, I like when she (laughs) says, listen, I feel terrible. Let's just go take care of this. And Dewey's like, all right, let's roll. Like it's, that's a cool scene too. So, man, yeah. Courtney Cox is the, like, working backwards Dude, through this, I'm she is you. the MVP. I'm telling you. It's all her. Yeah. It's all her. I love, I, this was great. I'm so happy. This is wonderful. Uh, uh, where can people find you, Zanandi? Um, on Twitter, where, yeah, um, I'm actually so quiet on social these days. But, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Zanandi, Zanandi Buertis. We've got a Facebook page. Um, I'm still a little writing for Cracked. We're going to try and, like, maybe start, like, a film club thing. So that's exciting. Check out the socials for that. I will share it if it happens. And, yeah, on the pod for more episodes with Mark on horror movies. Yeah. And stuff. We got Korean yeah. horror movies after this series. Korean horror movies, favorite horror movie oh, moments, yeah. and it's the end of the year horror stuff. So much. Yeah, I'm going to release yeah. that. <laughs> I wonder if the horror post will get released before this one, because we still have to do four, three, and then two. <gasps> and I'm thinking about releasing the it horror one be. in October. So, yeah, I'll just put it out on socials and I'll get people. But y- you know what? Even if you listen to this episode, go back and listen to your, our five favorite moments from 21st century horror, and then send us a message and tell us which ones you love. Don't tell us we're wrong yeah. with our five picks because thousands of movies have been released of horror movies. Horror, thousands of horror movies have been released in the 21st century, and there's hundreds of moments in all of them. Just letting you all know. I don't know how I'm going to pick. I do not know how I'm going to pick five. I, I actually, why? Why, Mark? Why are we doing this? It's insanity. <laughs> five. It's insane. I mean, thousands of moments. And it's not even like I have so many favorites. Yeah. To pick only five feels like cheating on all the other thousand. That's why it's, I don't it's like almost it. liber it's almost liberating though. If we had to pick fifty, that would be still very hard. And we'd be like, Oh, you picked fifty and you left this one out? This one's like we're picking five. <laughs> so of course, yeah. we're leaving thousands of moments out. So I don't it's like you left this out. Well, I also left out roughly a million moments. So Exactly. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. I'm just, um, yeah, I'm just saying. It's tough. I'm not actually looking forward to <laughs> narrowing it All down. the stress that we'll I caused from you. We'll just have a lot of honorable mentions. Yeah. A lot of, yes, yes, thanks for all the sleepless nights, Mark, but I'm going to have trying to figure out my five five. Screaming into the <laughs> no, abyss. It's actually all a lot of fun. It's actually all a lot of fun. I, I got it. my five. Well, I might. Yeah. I want, I want to get revenge I mean, I, in there. I laugh because I'm like, oh, Mark, please. That's not your five. <laughs> I love the beer can scene in Revenge. That list is going to change. But yeah, I mean, we already have the site. Like, I mean, the exorcism scene in the Black Eyed Storm. That's not going anywhere. <laughs> there, there. I mean, that's a give- yeah. giveaway. See, so if you're listening to this episode, go back. We're talking about Black Eyed Daughter, Revenge, Dark of the Wicked, so many movies. Um, go check it out. Beer can Phoenix. All right. Well, thank you so much for, for talking to me. This was great. <laughs> it was fun. Thanks. All right. So from me, Mark Hoffmeyer, for Zanandi Boetes, this is Movie Sons of Flicks. We'll see you next week.